the Down East Institute is the easternmost marine research laboratory and education center in the United States. We've actually been in this location on Great Wash Island for over 20 years. Um, but in 2017, we were able to expand our facility uh, with some investment from the Alliance for Maine's Marine Economy. Um, and that expansion enabled us to do more of what we really love, which is working with members of the industry, uh, harvesters, people in agriculture, uh, to help sustain their businesses and um, realize more and new opportunity. Uh, so that was what brought us to work with uh, Evan Young and why Kyle and Evan have been working closely over the years to develop uh, not only a way to add some security to the uh, mussel aquaculture industry, but also uh, to create a brand new product. Well, that's very exciting. And so um, there were some hints there around what Evan does, but um, Evan, would you like to introduce yourself and share a little bit about <coughs> what you do? Yeah, I'm uh, Evan Young. I uh, own and run uh, Blue Hill Bay Mussels. Uh, been doing it since uh, 1999, uh, counting on, uh, relying on wild caught seed for most of that time and uh, knew that it was getting harder to get that wild seed. And with the help of the Alliance of Maine and uh, DEI, the relationship, uh, we're getting some hatchery seed now, which is uh, really uh, allowing us to really take a next step ahead. Yeah. And so that hatchery seed, that's really your specialty, right, Kyle? So you're, you're an employee here at the Down East Institute. And do you want to share a little bit about what your focus is and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm the hatchery manager here at DEI. Uh, so it's my job to, to make the babies and uh, get them out the door to farmers. Um, what we're trying to do is sustainably produce uh, shellfish, that can be uh, eaten by consumers and as sustainably as possible, uh, create protein from the ocean and help people diversify their businesses as well as add security with a, uh, a hatchery approach. And the development of the, the main gold muscle has been really awesome over the last uh, seven to eight years working with Evan to really create a unique main product. We knew from the start that we needed to make our muscles different than everything on the market. And Evan came to us, I think it's eight years ago now, and said, one out of every couple thousand mussels on my farm comes out looking like this, with a beautiful golden and often striped pattern on them, like this. And, and he said, do you think you could breed these together and make them all look like this? So we tried, we didn't know what would happen. So when we took two of these and uh, spawned them together, 50% of the offspring came out looking like this. And we thought, oh my gosh, that's really cool. So we grew those up and spawned those babies together. Then it was 60%, then it was 70%, then it was 80%. And right now our, our current cohort of mussels is, that we're producing is, is over 90% of this phenotypic expression. And basically we've selected for this beautiful phenotype or physical characteristic, and it's created a, a new brand of seafood for Maine um, that is exclusive to Maine on the East Coast. Uh, so we really are super proud of our muscles, and uh, Evan grows a lot of them. It's just getting started. Uh, yeah. Some of the chefs I've talked to are really excited, uh, the wholesalers as well. Uh, so it's, it's, it's new. It's, uh, we're trying not to push it too big yet, yeah. but uh, it's com everything's coming to the front now. This has been happening in agriculture for centuries. Yep. Um, people selecting that, that tomato that looks really good or grows really fast or the, the Angus beef mm -hmm. um, that they're selecting for a particular trait and amplifying that through selective breeding. Everything's grown on the ropes off the bottom, so uh, they're naturally fed. We do, yeah. do, we do not add any extra feed or anything else. And you know, we, we get the, uh, the ropes with the seed on them or we've done some remote settling too where... I get them just the larvae. Um, we put them in our nursery, our nursery, the Blue Hill Salt Pond. They stay in there for three months, four months, and then uh, we take them out and run them through all our processing equipment, make them individual fossils, sort of like M&Ms if you want. Yeah. And uh, we put them through a Spanish socking machine that uh, puts them on a rope. Uh, the cotton holds the muscles in place. And uh, after three or four weeks, the cotton all dissolves. So they're in the water column all to themselves on the rope. So they'll attach on that rope. Yeah. They'll stay there for 12 to 18 months before we start harvesting. We're going to jump in first here. And we're going to go ahead and steam a few mussels. So the, the easy 
the easy thing about steaming mussels is that you really kind of, it's a, it's a choose your own adventure kind of experience. Um, based on the aromatics you use, the fats you use, the uh, complementary ingredients that you use, you can really take that in any direction that you want to go. We're going to go pretty traditional and pretty straightforward today. We're going to use a little bit of, uh, of butter here. We're going to use some garlic and some shallots. And so we're going to go right in with that. Our pot's warming up nicely here. Our pot is sizzling nicely now. Our garlic and our shallots are smelling wonderful, cooking in our butter. We're using a medium heat here. And we're going to go ahead and go in with, um, I don't know, about 15, 20 of these lovely mussels. Um, it's a no-brainer that all of these are great, live, delicious mussels. Some folks will tell you to never cook an open mussel, um, but if you tap them, a lot of times they'll close right back up, especially if they're a good, lively, fresh mussel like this. And now we're going to add in a crisp, light white wine. We're using Viognier, uh, which could be substituted for a Sauvignon Blanc, a Pinot Grigio, anything like that, that is going to going to kind of complement that nice flavor of the mussels, cut that salt a little bit, pair with that richness nicely. So mussels don't take terribly long to cook. You do want to put a lid on them. The goal with putting the lid on is it's creating some convection inside the pot so that that wine is steaming, it's hitting the top of the pot, and it's raining back down over those mussels. So you're cycling that, that moist, hot air. I can see I've got steam coming out pretty good now. Um, so I'm going to open up and look in my pot and all of my mussels have opened up that mussels that they've released their juice and we've got this lovely mussel jus and i'm going to do something a little bit non-traditional here i'm going to take my mussels and i'm going to strain them into this strainer right here and that's going to allow me to capture all of this lovely mussel juice right here behind and so this would be your your jus or something like that if you were um you know roasting a a, a beef roast or something like that. We're going to put that right back into our pot. I'm going to increase my heat a little bit, bring it to a boil very quickly. So we're at a nice boil. We've got a nice heavy bottom pot. I'm actually going to go ahead and just turn it off at this point. And we're going to add in, uh, let's add in four chunks of butter today. Let's get crazy. Um, and so once you get that butter in, there's a couple of different approaches here. You can whisk vigorously. You can stir like crazy with a fork. I like to swirl the pot and really kind of create a little bit of uh, like a whirlpool or a jacuzzi of butter here. Um, right now we've got almost like a very thin butter sauce with a little bit of garlic and shallot. We're going to go right back in with our mussels. We're going to stir them into that lovely butter sauce. I'm going to go in with just a little bit of um, finely chopped parsley here, a little bit of chive, and then lastly, just a little bit of uh, chopped fennel frond. We've got a nice little dish here. It's very common when serving steamed mussels to serve a, a dish rested in a dish. That's going to allow you to um, have uh, the option for the guest as they're eating them, have somewhere to discard their shells. So you could serve that at any bistro um, here in Maine or away, and people would just have a wonderful time eating it. Now, it would be an absolute crime not to serve some bread to sop up that delicious mussel juice. Um, absolutely buttery toasted bread. So I've got a couple of pieces of bread here. Um, this is a lovely sourdough loaf from Brazen Baking. All right, let's give them a go. I'll grab some, uh, some spoons and we'll give a couple of these a try. Very good. Very good. Very good. Well, that's good when the, when the farmer enjoys this product. We hope you join us next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.